Okay, well, let's see if we can get started with this. Um, I mean this to be a, a, an introduction to uh, Dark Souls, give you a little of information about, you know, how you can get started with the game, because I know sometimes it's a barrier up front, the game doesn't always explain all the mechanics uh, really easily. This is going to be spoiler-free, I don't intend to try to give anything away, I would avoid... Uh, reading guides and things if I were you. Once you have the basic information down, just enjoy the game for what it is and, and you want to try to avoid some spoilers. Um, I'm going to get started with some real basics about creating a new character. Probably just a couple things to note here when the character creator. The only couple things that matter is first your class. Uh, as you can see there's several classes to choose from. They have different starting stats and equipment. Um, probably the big things to note here is that if you want to be able to use magic right off the bat, um, you'll want to choose one of these three classes, Sorcerer, Pyromancer, or Cleric. There are three different types of magics in the game. Sorcery uh, is probably what you would consider traditional magic. Pyromancy is all fire-based. Uh, and then Cleric is what in the game called Miracles. Miracles are um, usually like status effects, buffs, but there are some attack style things as well, but more of like uh, probably what you would consider to be, you know, things from the gods. The other thing to note is that the thief will always start with the master key. You see that in the description. Um, the master key allows you to open some doors without finding the regular key. And that is a big bonus because it's also a starting gift. So you can basically get two starting gifts if you choose the thief. But thief's a little tougher to get started with. Doesn't have the greatest weapon or stats to get going. But, you know, there's always some, some good and bad. The other things you'll see here are the stats that change depending on what you start out with. Uh, but probably the big thing to know is that it really doesn't matter how you start. Um, you don't start as a character that uses magic and you want to change later. You can completely do that. You just get the items that let you use magic and buy the spells or find the spells and that's all there is to it. And then get the appropriate stats that you need to build up. Um, so don't think that picking any particular class in the beginning locks you out of anything. It really doesn't. It just kind of affects the very beginning of the game and getting started. So pick what you like. I don't think there's a wrong answer to that. Um, the gift, there are certain starting gifts that you can pick. It kind of gives you a description of all of them. Um, as again, I mentioned before, the master key, you get that for free if you pick the thief class, so don't pick it again. If you are going with a thief, you can pick a different selection. Um, you can get any of these items via other methods in the game, so these are not things you can only get in one way or another. Like, you don't have to pick them now or lose out forever on them. So again, just choose something that sounds interesting to you. Um, I'll be honest, probably the better choices are the ones at the bottom, so like one of the rings or the master key. Um, but, you know, again, there's no wrong choice here, and nothing that's really going to hurt gameplay any. So that's a little about the character creator. I'm going to switch over to a character I've already got created here for a minute, just to talk a little bit about that quickly. Um, I'm going to talk to you about some of the basics of the game, and I've got this character kind of ready to go. Um, and equipped with some of the basic things that you need to know about. So first off, let's talk about the UI that we've got here. So first, in the upper left-hand corner, we've got um, the humanity count. And so you see, for example, in the upper left right now, it says 0, 1, and numbers are in white. Um, there are two states that my character can be in, and that is either human or hollowed. And um, hollowing is a state which makes my character look kind of like beef jerky and uh, human is just that. So it plays into the story of the game. I won't spend any time ruining anything there. But the only mechanic that really matters within the game is that when you're in human form, you'll know that because in the upper left-hand corner, the number that's there will be in white. Um, if you are hollowed, the number will be completely in gray. And in human form, you can participate in online play with co-op uh, or invasions to attack others. And if it's you're hollowed, you can't. Other than that, there's not really much to that point. So it's just a barrier or entry to online play. And uh, if you don't ever want to play the on on game online, you don't have to. Just don't become human, and you don't have to worry about any of it. But I would encourage you to really enjoy the online play part. It's a lot of fun. Um, why hinder yourself? The number that's up there indicates how many humanity I have. It can be from 0 to 99. Um, they can be consumed uh, for a couple different things that we'll mention in a moment. Um, and the number that's up there is what normally would be referred to in guides as liquid humanity. It's just uh, uh, this, uh, humanity that's ready to spend. There are also items in the game that are humanity. 
And what that does is when you use the item, it adds more to the humanity counter in the upper left. So uh, that's just something that you want to you know, keep in mind as far as that goes. Um, the right bars to the right of that, you have the HP bar in red and then the stamina bar in green. You uh, consume stamina as you do certain actions like uh, dodging, dodge roll here, and then um, like swinging your weapon. It will regenerate over time. The thing you want to see is in the lower left-hand corner, this is uh, my equipment. So um, the four directions for the items in the lower left uh, correspond to your D-pad. And so by pushing a direction on the D-pad will change the item that corresponds to that direction. And basically what you have here, starting at the top, you have spells. So this, by pushing up, I would be able to pick between any spells I have attuned. And we'll talk about attunement in a minute. I only, currently only have one, so it's showing me I can't change that. Um, on the left, uh, what we have is my left hand. So by choosing that, I am switching the items that are in my left hand, and then same with the right. I can choose equipped items in my right hand. Bottom are items uh, that are equipped, period. So I'm going to equip a few as you can see. But that I can cycle through equipped items. In the lower right hand corner, I have my soul count. Souls are used both to. You can spend them to level up, and you can spend them to buy items. So, they have dual use. You'll get uh, souls from killing enemies. Let's take a look at some stats for a moment. So, if I go into the stats screen, we'll explain these for a minute. I'll kind of start and work my way through. So, covenants. Um, covenants are basically tied to online play. They're a way to do certain things online, either co-op or invasions, and earn rewards for those. You'll have opportunities to uh, join Covenants and play with those later. You'll see throughout the story. Um, if you don't ever want to do the online play, you can still do the Covenant things through offline methods. Uh, level of my character. I consume souls to increase my level. How many souls I currently have. Um, it does tell you, though, that they are left behind the spot of one's death. So if I die in the world... Um, I lose all my souls and liquid humanity, and I, it leaves a bloodstain mark. And then, uh, to regain those, I have to make it back to that and reclaim them. So, you've probably heard about that before. But, but that's the penalty for dying. And really, quite honestly, it's not that big of a penalty. Don't let that worry you. Uh, vitality, that is a parameter for health. So the more vitality I have, the more HP. Uh, attunement is tied to your attunement slots here. Um, to use spells, you have to attune them or equip them, basically. And um, if you want to be able to equip more than one spell at a time, first you have to have enough attunement slots. So like equip slots. So right now I only have one, so I can only have one spell equipped. But if I increased my attunement stat, I would get more slots, and then I could buy or find more spells to equip into those slots. If you're never going to use magic at all, don't ever waste any time with attunement. Endurance, as it tells you here, it does several things. One of those is stamina. This is probably the most important stat in the game, so this, increasing this will give you more stamina that you can use. Um, it also uh, determines your equip load, which is over here. Uh, that's the number to the right is your base equip load. Uh, um, I mean, sorry, your max equip load. Um, how heavy worth of stuff can you equip? Uh, there is encumbrance in this game. Um, so increasing endurance allows me to equip more heavier items. And then also resistance to bleeding. So uh, that's a, a stat that we'll see in a minute. Strength um, is a, st a stat that usually affects the ability to use uh, strength-based weapons. Um, when we talk about uh, weaponry, it's important to understand a couple things about how those things operate. So first off, um, some weapons uh, are more strength-based and some are more dexterity-based. But uh, uh, strength-based weapons uh, will have minimum stats that you'll have to reach, and uh, they may also mix those among others. If you don't have the required stats to use a weapon, uh, it will warn you about that, and you'll be able to use it very terribly, uh, and usually very ineffectively. But there are ways around some of that, and one of those obviously is just increasing that particular strength. Also, we'll see in, in weapons in just a moment that um, there's a thing called weapon scaling, so uh, weapons will scale damage with certain stats. So for example, a weapon that scales with strength, the more strength you have, the more damage you can do with it. The same idea is with dexterity, but dexterity is usually for like lighter or faster weapons as well as bows. 
So, uh, uh, same idea though. Uh, by increasing strength or dexterity, if the weapon you're using does not have a um, kind of a bonus, a scaling stat for that, it won't do anything for you at all. So if I'm using a weapon that only scales with dexterity and I, I pump my strength up to 99, the amount of damage I do will not change at all. So you want to tailor these stats towards what types of weapons you're going to use. Um, resistance is probably the stat I never change. <laughs> Uh, it does ba uh, alter your base uh, defense, your physical defense, uh, as well as magic and fire, lightning, as well as your resistance to poison. You'll see those in just a minute. But um, you can do that with gear very easily. I usually just don't waste points in leveling up resistance. You can, but it's not a big bang for your buck if you ask me. Intelligence. Um, intelligence and faith are parameters that are used for magic. Um, intelligence is tied to sorceries. And so, um, similarly to weapons, if you want to use a magic spell, you have to have the base requirements. You have the ability to use it in the first place. And then secondly, um, the, the items you use to cast spells uh, will scale with that particular stat. So catalysts, which are items used to cast magical spells, will scale with intelligence. So you can do more damage with your spells the more intelligence you have. But you have to meet the minimum requirements to use it at all. Same thing with faith. Faith is used for miracles, um, and you have to have minimum stats, and then, again, the items to cast uh, miracles will usually scale with faith, but, you know, not always. Pyromancers do not have a scaling stat, so um, you actually physically level up the item that you use to do pyromancy. So any character can use pyromancy. Uh, you don't have to have any stats to use those, which makes it kind of a nice, a nice thing to get started with. Um, but if you want miracles or... Uh, if you want sorceries, you'll have to level these up. We talked about humanity. Again, uh, it tells you a little bit about that. But um, also a couple things to note is that the more humanity you have will increase your item discoveries and um, also your resistance to curse up to a certain point. HP, mentioned that already. So obviously your hit points, um, current versus maximum. Stamina, this is your max stamina. And uh, everything you do pretty much uses up stamina, so stamina management is huge. Equip load, I mentioned that a moment ago, but you have um, current versus max uh, equip load. That's going to be really important in terms of what you have equipped because there are movement thresholds, and so uh, when it comes to that, uh, being under certain thresholds will change your, your movement of your character. Um, damage I'm doing with my right hand weapon that's in the first slot, so you can see um, I have a Morning Star in there right now, it'll do 143 physical damage. Uh, I have nothing in my other uh, uh, slot for my right hand, so that's just my fist, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage there. Left hand, currently I have a shield that's there, shields can do damage uh, in certain cases, but uh, that would be what it would be. And then um, I have a Talisman to cast miracles right now, so you can see it obviously doesn't do very much damage, although it can be used if I wanted to. Defense, what I have is current defense versus base defense. So the 34 is my base defense with no armor. And then um, how much I have on top of that with my equipped items. And then versus different types of attacks. So here's strike attacks, slash attacks, and thrust attacks. So enemies you will use different types and um, you can use uh, different equipment to increase your resistance to various ones of those. And, and also enemies are usually weak to one type of that. Uh, magic defense, again, you have base versus equipped items, uh, fire defense, and lightning defense. Moving on from that, uh, poise. Poise is a stat that you get from armor. Uh, poise allows you to take attacks without staggering. So if I and an enemy were attacking at the same time, but the enemy were to hit me a little before that, um, if the enemy does damage past my poise threshold, I will stagger and it will stop my action. But if I have enough poise to absorb that blow, I would then continue my attack and hit. So it's basically uh, a key to whether you get staggered uh, when you get hit. And so if you want to continue to attack even though you're being hit, uh, you want to increase your poise. Um, bleed resistance. As I mentioned, that goes up with humanity. Um, bleed, as well as poison and curse, are status effects. To get inflicted with those status effects, basically you have to, um, uh, you know, encounter that particular effect. Um, so with bleed, usually that's like a type of weapon that would inflict that status on you or a barrier of some sort. And with all three of these, when you're in 
the risk of that, you'll see a meter that will start to fill up. Once that meter becomes full, you will then take that particular effect. So when it comes to bleed, um, when that uh, when you fill that meter up, you will take a set percentage of damage from your total damage. So it's a burst damage, It's and it can hurt pretty bad if you're not careful. Um, poison resistance. Um, there are two types of poison in the game. There's poison and toxic. Um, poison is like a lower level damage over time, where toxic is high level damage over time. Um, the higher your resistance, the longer it takes, the harder it is to fill the bar up. Uh, and again, though, once the bar fills, though, that's it. You, you will take the, st the standard poison or toxic damage until it wears off, and that takes quite some time. Curse is a very, very bad status. You really don't want curse. But the idea behind the curse is, um, if you become cursed, it's an instant death. And uh, also, while you're cursed from that point on, until you remove the curse, you only have half HP. So it's a very bad situation to be in. There's not a lot of enemies that can infli inflict curse. And again, though, um, it's a meter. And once the meter fills all the way, then you're cursed, instant death, and half HP until you cure the curse. So bad news, uh, try not to get cursed. But again, there are items and things you can get to to mitigate that. Item discovery, that's drop rate. So um, if you want to increase your item discovery, there are items you can use for that, or you can have more humanity. Up to 10 will affect your your discovery rate. So that's how often items will drop. So if you're trying to get drops from enemies, just worry about that one. And we've already talked a little about attunement stats. So that is the basic idea of the stats that are involved and uh, why you might want to change those. Talking about controls for a minute, um, we've already kind of talked about you know the items that are equipped, etc., with the D-pad. But let's talk a little bit about some basics of using those items. So um, usually you equip a weapon in your right hand and a shield in your left hand. But you don't have to do that. You can have two shields. Uh, you can have two two weapons. It's whatever you like. But this is kind of the standard combo behind that. Uh, to use your weapon uh, in the right hand, you would use either. Uh, R1 or R2. R1 is going to be a light attack, and R2 is going to be a heavy attack. And uh, you'll see they consume stamina, and I can't do the attack if I have no more stamina. Uh, left hand is usually shield, but again, doesn't have to be. So if it is a shield, though, this is the way it works. So L1 is block. Block with the shield, uh, and it will mitigate damage depending on the shield's stats, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, with small and medium shields, you can parry with the L2 button. Pairing allows you to deflect an incoming blow and then leave the opponent staggered so you can do a very heavy attack on them. Heavier shields don't have the option to parry. Uh, often they'll have a shield bash instead, which can kind of stagger the enemy, but it doesn't open them up for quite as much damage. But that's usually the case. This is L1, R1. You can also two-hand a weapon. So if I hit, in this case with the Xbox, it's the Y button, it's usually the top. Uh, face button. That's going to be uh, two hand your right hand item. So now uh, it will do more damage. So if I hit uh, my R1, it's going to do that and I can do a heavier. But the big thing you want to keep in mind in this particular case is I can't block with my shield, I think it's behind me, but I can still block. If I hold my left hand, my L1 down, I can still block. It allows me to. Um, and weapons can deflect damage. They just aren't as good at it as shields, but it is uh, better than taking all the incoming damage completely. Um, L2 does not allow me to parry them. See, so yeah, it's just another block in that particular case. Uh, other attacks would be rolling attacks. So if you roll and hit your attack button at the very end, you will do a rolling attack when you get up. Uh, different weapons will have different rolling attacks. Uh, it just kind of depends on you know, the weapon, some of the, like special attacks that you can do at the end of your roll. Uh, roll itself is the right hand face button, so the Xbox is the B button. Um, while you are rolling attacks, um, we'll go through you. So you have some invincibility during your roll. Uh, that's like, super important for dodging attacks. You'll get used to the, kind of the timing behind that. But kind of in the middle of your roll is when you are uh, in, invulnerable. Um, your equip load determines how quickly you roll. So right now I'm at about mid-speed. Uh, if I were to take off a bunch of my armor, if I go in here and I'm unequipped with that, I would see um, I can do a very fast roll and I'll have more invulnerability, although of course I can do more damage because I have less armor on. If I were to put very heavy armor on, um, I, I would have a very slow roll. I would not have nearly as much invincibility in that. 
Um, and I could always increase my endurance stat to uh, allow me to equip heavier things to kind of uh, change that uh, mix between status. You can have multiple people, so you can kind of weigh it out when it's comfortable. I like fast roll, but that doesn't really matter a lot. Um, other attacks. So um, with most weapons, you have a kick if you push up on the left stick and your L1 button. So um, if I can get it to come off right. I don't want some time today. There it is. So there's a kick. You have to hit both of them at the same time, so it's up and L1 will perform a kick motion. Um, you'll use that to break an enemy's guard. So if an enemy is holding their shield up and they're, and you can't hit them through their shield, kicking them will usually uh, try to break their poise or break their shield. So it decreases the stability and kind of knocks it free, so that way you can get a hit in on them. Because if not, you know, it's very hard to do damage through a shield. You can also just push enemies around, so you can kick enemies off ledges. Um, very deliberate. Do this, but you can kick enemies off edges, they'll die. That works pretty well, too. Some weapons uh, will have a special animation that is attached to that instead, so they will not do a kick. You have a special animation instead. So you'll see this one's like a little stab and a step backwards with an S stock. So some of them do have special animations. I hate that. I really love the kick, and I don't like using weapons that don't give me the kick, because you'll need that a lot. Um, secondly is up on the L left stick and the R I'm sorry, the yeah, the R2 button. So up and R2 allows you to do a jumping attack. Jumping attacks um, leap a little bit and then of course hit. They do a lot of damage. That's something to keep in mind you can be knocked out of that animation. And we'll talk about parries in a minute. Um, you cannot parry a leaping attack. So if an enemy is trying to parry you, or it looks like a, a person is, you can do a leaping attack that cannot parry that. Of course, they can guard as well, though. A is your general, like, action button. So whatever it is, it'll tell you on the screen. It, otherwise, it doesn't really do much for you. And then X, in my case, which would be the left hand face button, will use whatever item is in this slot. So. Here, uh, the Estus Flask. Using the Estus Flask is probably your most important item. That refills your health. It uses charges. Once I use them all up, I can't use it anymore. Um, similar things with magic. We'll see those use the charge system as well. Um, or just limited number of items. So I only have 10 throwing knives. If I throw one, now I have 9 throwing knives left. Um, some items, you can use them as much as you want. They won't have a number, so those are unlimited use. But that tells you a little bit about some of the buttons that are here. The other one is probably normally be considered the select button is how you can do gestures. So you can do things like cheer or wave, usually for online play. You're going to use that to communicate because you're not always going to sit and uh, try to voice chat with everybody that you come across, but you can get some basic things across by pointing or gesturing or whatever the case is uh, to do some really pretty basic communications. Um, start button will bring up the little submenu uh, you have. Uh, use or go through your items, your equipment, stats, and then just kind of the basic quit the game sort of piece that's to it. Talking about weapons and shields, so if I look at a weapon and I go into its stats, I see quite a bit of information here. First off, uh, under attack, that is the type of attack damage that it does. So this Morning Star does 124 base physical damage, and this is plus 18, which is, comes from the parameter bonus, or the scaling bonus. We'll see that in a second. But it does no magic damage, no fire damage, no lightning damage. And the critical damage, uh, when I do a critical attack, is 100%. So it just does normal critical damage. Some weapons, if I were to go up and look at my bandit's knife, you'll see it's 147 critical, meaning it does additional critical damage. Um, so when I use critical, um, it will do even more. And I'll show you a critical attack in a minute. You also see parameter bonus, so see that is a C. The, the stats going from left to right are strength, dexterity, intelligence, and faith. So this Morning Star gets a C rating for the uh, bonus to strength. That's where that plus 18 comes from in my physical attack. The base damage by itself is 124, and the scaling bonus at a C rank for the amount of strength that I currently have is 18. So I can increase that bonus. Uh, eff efficacy by increasing my strength, um, or if I upgrade the weapon, sometimes the parameter bonus will get better as well. But you can see if I use some other thing, they, they may have other parameter bonuses that are tied to other stats or dual stats. Uh, so those are things that you have to keep in mind. Um, as well as that, below you will see additional 
are auxiliary effects. Those, uh, what you're seeing from left to right, are bleed, poison, um, light or divine, and then dark damage bonuses. So some weapons have these built in, like this Morning Star. It does bleed damage, so you can see it applies 300 bleed um, on hit. And again, if I bleed an enemy, I hit them enough to fill up their bleed meter, uh, I will then do a, a set amount of percentage bonus damage to them. Uh, poison, with once I fill their meter up, I won't see it, but it will apply poison effect to them. Uh, divine uh, does additional damage to enemies that are weak to Divine, so you can imagine what type of enemies. This is kind of like the D&D thing, right? Undead enemies uh, take additional damage to Divine. And then there's Dark, and then there's, some again, some enemies that uh, are um, weak to Dark damage. There are others as well, things like Fire, Lightning, uh, Magic. And, but those are in the base attacks uh, stats that you see up top. On the right hand side is blocking damage. So you can see weapons, as I showed, you can block damage. Those are the percentages to which it will reduce those. So if I'm blocking with my Morning Star, it will absorb 45% of the incoming damage. Not as good as a shield, but it works. Um, shields obviously will have much better blocking damage. Um, so you can see percentages for that. The other thing you want to keep in mind are required parameters. So again, it's strength, dexterity, you know, intelligence, and uh, faith. Those are you have to have those numbers to be able to use the weapon effectively. If you if you don't, for example, if I try to equip um, the Zweihander, it, I don't have the stats for it. They will tell me, hey, can't do that. And if I actually try to use the Zweihander, you'll see it's just I it's terrible. I, I will do terrible damage. My guy looks like a moron trying to use it because he just doesn't have the stats. So you can do that. Um, you can two-hand, and that doubles or halves the stat requirements. So if I had, in that case, I could use it if I had uh, not quite as enough stats, but I, I still don't in that particular case. So uh, I wouldn't choose to use that particular weapon. So those are things you got to keep in mind when you want to uh, and use certain items. Oops. So um, last but not least, I think you see durability and weight. So durability, um, as you use a weapon or as armor gets attacked or shields, it will decrease its durability. Um, once it gets down to a certain threshold, it will warn you that it's about to break and it will become less effective slightly. If you run that durability all the way down to zero, the item itself will break completely and then it will be useless. So if it's armor, it will not do any, except it will not um, take any damage for you and if it's a weapon, it won't do any damage. Um, you can repair weapons at a blacksmith, or you can get an item where you can do that um, at a bonfire, which we'll talk about bonfires in just a minute. And then wait, just so you can see, so you can um, see how that plays in. Similarly speaking, when you look at uh, armor, you'll have your kind of your defense statistics for those. So, how does it guard you from physical or fire or lightning? Um, how much poise does it add to you? Uh, and then uh, resistance changes, as well as durability and weight. So keep those things in mind. Uh, while you're looking and browsing through these things, you can always change off to the far right the, the stats, how it's going to affect those by hitting, uh, in this case, my case, the Y button, but it tells you at the bottom. So certain things, if I wanted to see how a piece of equipment might change, like my bleed or poison resistance, I could do that on the fly without having to actually look at all the base stats. Um, so what I have is my equips for my... my um, right hand is here, so I can have two slots, two things equipped at the same time. Uh, blank is just your fist. And then left hand, usually that's going to be a shield. Uh, and this is a talisman. A talisman is a, an item you have to have to use miracles, but uh, similarly speaking, a, a catalyst is an item that you have to have to use um, spells, and a, um, a pyromancy flame is something you have to have to use pyromancy. So you'll get those if you pick those classes in the beginning, but if not, you can get them later. Not a big deal. Um, head, body, uh, hand, and leg slots for equipment. And then rings. Rings, kind of like most RPG-ish kind of games, give you special stats. So you can equip up to two rings at the same time. This is the item slot. So you saw my SS and things. These are things I can switch between. I can equip um, up to five at a time so I can switch between those. Usually a good idea to keep some basic things that you'll be using regularly here. Um, and then arrows and bolts. If you want to use a bow, you have to equip arrows. You have to have an 
enough of them to use. So you would equip the kinds of arrows that you want there. And basically, you have two slots because it's like before. You have um, R1 and R2. So this would be the R1 arrows and the R2 arrows when you're using your bow. That way you could have like regular arrows and poison arrows and just use each one when you wanted to. Uh, very similar for crossbows. If you want to use a crossbow, it's um, bolts. The same idea here. Uh, bows are aimable, where crossbows are really just pretty simple lock-on uh, range weapons. So that gives you a little idea about your equipment and kind of what you want to keep in mind when you're equipping things. All right, the next thing to talk about is the bonfire itself. So if you're in the bonfire, it recharges all of the charges for uh, spells and your Estus Flask. So you see at the bottom there my Estus Flask, which fills my health when I use it. Uh, if I use it all up, then I'm kind of out of luck, and it will refill when I rest at a bonfire. That's kind of your spot to refill with your healing items. Same thing applies with spells. So spells have charges, just like your Estus Blast does. Every time you use a spell, it decreases the count by one. That count will not replenish until you rest at a bonfire. Now there are items that you can get that can replenish the number of spell uses that you have, but uh, generally speaking, uh, that's what the bonfire does. Um, resting at a bonfire also resets all enemies in the area, so if you've killed some enemies, they come back, especially except for bosses and special enemies. So um, keep that in mind when you want to rest. Uh, you know, It's going to respawn all those enemies, but again, no bosses, no special enemies uh, respawn. Level up, spend your souls to level up. Uh, as you can see, it will tell me what stats will change if I were to level up certain items. And so you can play around with that before you confirm it to kind of get what you want. You can even see how uh, changing certain stats may affect my weapon damage, my R1 weapon going up. That's due to scaling. It's not due to anything else other than that scaling rating for that particular weapon. Um, I have an item to repair my equipment, so you can do that. It doesn't cost a whole lot of souls basically about one per point, not exactly, but um, keep your weapons prepared. You don't have to worry about that. It, it takes quite a ways of you ignoring it for those to break, and then you get a warning before it does, so just keep that in mind. Um, attuning magic, as I mentioned before, if you want to use a magic spell, you have to attune it first, and you do that at the bonfire. So um, what that does is it brings up all your slots. So I have one slot right now. Um, I can select that slot, and then I can change what magic lives in that slot now. That one, I can see I don't have enough things for it, but um, if I tried to use it, it would say no thanks. I can't do that. But what I'm doing there is I've just got my talisman equipped and I'm trying to hit um, L1, my left hand. Um, but if I want to switch magics, I have to come back and change what's a two. Now, if I had more slots, I could obviously do more spells at the same time. Um, here, in this particular case, I do have the stats, so I hit L1 for my left hand, and then I use it. Uh, otherwise, I can also bash, with it, but as we saw before, the stats are pretty terrible. I wouldn't want to bash too much with uh, a talisman. Um, also, kindling. Um, as I mentioned before about liquid humanity in the upper left, and restoring your Estus Flask. Uh, each bonfire, by default, usually only restores five Estus Flasks. If you want to get more Estus from resting in a bonfire, you'll want to kindle it. And what kindling does is it costs one liquid humanity in the upper left, and then it will give you five more Estus every time you rest there. So if normally it's five, I kindle it once, then I can get 10 every time I rest there. The maximum you can kindle is up to 20, but it will only let you do that after you get a certain item. So the first max is 10. As you'll see here, if I try to kindle any further, it says I can't without the secret right. Um, with the secret right, then I could go up to 20 uh, kindling. You'll find that as you play through the game. But it does cost you humanity. And you can only kindle when you are human. So if you're a hollow and you want to become human, you have to reverse your hollow. You can do that at a bonfire. Um, here it's going to tell me I'm not hollow. But if I was, I did this, it would consume one liquid humanity to make me human. At that point, I can kindle from there on, or I can play online. Uh, but again, you don't have to. You don't have to do any of those things. But if you want to be able to kindle a bonfire, you're at least going to have to become human first. You can get humanity by killing enemies in a level where you've not defeated the boss uh, on occasion, or you can use the items called humanity, and that will give you one humanity per use or, or two in this particular case. So there's plenty of ways to get humanity. Don't 
Don't stress too terribly much about that. Um, kind of talking a little about combat itself. I'll go up here to where some enemies are to do some quick displays. I mentioned that you can guard and you can parry, and then you have your standard attacks. Um, that's pretty straightforward, but let me talk a little about parrying for a moment. Parrying is a little bit of a timing thing, so that'll be pretty terrible on that one. You'll see there I parried his attack, so um, usually it's about right when the weapon starts to move forward is when you want to parry. And then you'll hear that special noise, and then what it does is it leaves them stunned. And then what I can do is a special attack. That's a critical attack that I'm doing right there. So all I have to do is once I've got them stunned, I just hit the uh, R1 button as if I'm doing a regular attack, but it will do a critical. But they have to be in that stun state. Otherwise, I'll just do like a regular attack. Um, but parrying enemies is very useful because it does a lot of extra damage and lets you kill them uh, much easier. Not every attack can be parried. Most humanoid type creatures like this, you can parry their attacks and leave them open. Um, monsters and things, uh, often you can't. So it usually has to be some sort of weapon and a hand. Um, and if you don't parry perfectly, you'll get what's called a partial parry, which means that you'll still take a little damage uh, and you won't get the parry, but you won't take as much as if you got hit without any modifier whatsoever. So a partial parry is uh, better than taking a direct hit, and it's kind of encouraging you to try parrying, because even if you mess the timing up a little bit, you won't take as much as the full damage. So it's, it's not a bad idea, and I would encourage you to get used to it. Um, it's not a bad tactic. Now, do you have to use parrying? No. I mean, you never have to parry in the game if you want. You could just simply dodge attack. So I'm going to get rid of a couple of these guys so I can show you a little bit more about base targeting and things. Um, other critical attacks are going to be like this. That's a backstab. If I go completely behind the enemy and I hit my R1 to do an attack, it will do a critical attack on them. It's called a backstab, um, but I have to be directly behind them for that animation to work. Um, I can also just block attacks. If I hold up my shield and fail one, it will deflect attacks um, based on the shield stats, how much it normally deflects. Also absorbs, um, you'll see, uses stamina. When I hold my shield up, my stamina regenerates more slowly. If I run out of stamina, then I am blocking, it will stagger me, and then I can, um, I'll be vulnerable to a, a more damaging attack. So. Kind of be careful with your stamina manager. This guy's so weak, he's probably not going to be able to break my guard. But um, what determines how much stamina you lose per hit is there's a, uh, a stability stat that, st that the shields have. So you'd want to keep that in mind. Uh, depending if you're going to try to block a lot, um, or if, like, here's fire damage. Now, my shield doesn't deflect all damage, you can tell. It's here in this case. But this type of small shield is much better for parrying, and so you'd probably want to use it for that. Whereas bigger shields are better at blocking damage itself. But I like to parry. So that's the case. Other than that, you can just simply, you know, as I mentioned before, block hits, retaliate normally, that's fine. Um, usually when an enemy rebounds off your hit, then they will take additional damage because they're kind of in like a little bit of a stun state. And uh, so that's something you want to keep in mind as well. Probably the last thing to talk about is uh, online play. So um, to play online, you do have to be human. Um, and you have to be in an area where, if you want to play with others, you haven't beat the boss yet. Now, you can help anybody. And that's the means of uh, something called soapstone. Let's see if I can get to the place real quick. Just in the middle of nowhere. So um, I have these items called soapstones. They do a couple different things. There's orange, white, and red. I don't have red on this character right now. But uh, a white soapstone, I can't use it because of the area I'm in right this minute, it will put a mark on the ground that will allow other people to summon me to their world so I can help them fight. Um, let's see, I'm going to load up another character while I talk about this. Maybe I can give you an example. So this is where the online play comes in. You can do co-op through summoning player through uh, summoning as well. So I'm going to switch to a character that's a little more advanced. I'll probably get invaded in this area because it's a little higher level character. Um, but that's not a big deal. I'm not really here to talk too much about f player versus player fighting. I just want to get in a little bit and show you the basics of how uh, the online piece. So I'm going to load up a character that's much farther along in the game. 
this particular character is going to have uh, the summoning items. So right now you'll see I am not in a human state. You can see that in the upper left hand corner because it's uh, the uh, numbers in gray. And if you look at my character, they look like uh, beef jerky. So I am hollowed right now. I can spend my one to reverse my hollowing. Also, notice I got 20 SS blasts. I've already kindled this bonfire. You can see it's pretty big. So you will see the difference. I look much more like a regular person now. And I can now participate in online play. So um, if I sit here, lines will show up. So you'll see them on the floor. Here's one. Um, if I wanted to summon this character to my and then they would appear in my world. I can do that with uh, up to a couple. And we can co-op together. Um, summon phantoms cannot heal themselves, but when you use your S heal some of their HP, it can stay with you until I they die or you defeat. Um, so, uh, people can invade your world, uh, come try to kill you, um, and are not attacked by in uh, They can't heal no man. Um, you can continue to use Estus all you like. You can only be invaded by like one. So, you know. It's something you got to keep in mind. Last is the orange soapstone. So you see these messages on the ground? These are messages that other people have left. Uh, so maybe it might be a message about here. This is one I left earlier. So I'm just goofing off. Be wary of night. Um, but you can do that. Like if you want to leave a tip for somebody. Or maybe you find a secret. And you want to leave them a message that tells them. Like hey watch out for this enemy or whatever. Uh, if you go to your items. You'll have the orange guide soapstone. And when you use it. You can use a pre-built message. So, you know, I could just put, like, good luck. Um, but I could use more information that I want. Um, and that way someone else can come up and read the message. So it might be, you know, be wary of night or something like that that you put down. Um, you can also rate messages. So if I come up here and I said, boy, this is a really good message. I could uh, use my soapstone. And I could rate their message and say it's either good or bad, right? I could say, sure, good message. Um, by rating messages, they can, every time a message is rated, they'll get um, a little boost in their health. So that's uh, never a bad thing. And if you've left good messages, people usually kind of reward you by rating your message. And you can, should do that to others too. They give them a little boost and uh, help other people because you'll see the ratings. Now, you can also rate it negatively. You won't really know if something's good or bad from its rating. Uh, people can also lie and tell you something. So that's something you want to keep in a, a mind as well. Um, last but not least, um, you want to keep in mind that when you are either invaded or you have summoned someone else, you cannot rest at a bonfire. It's like now, right now, notice I cannot rest at a bonfire. I guarantee because somebody's trying to invade me. And uh, that's something that you want to keep in mind um, when you have another person playing with you, however it is. And your choice is either to beat the boss, um, if you have an invader, kill the invader, um, or you can send friends home with something called the black... Um, Black Separation Crystals. If you use that, you can send friendly phantoms home. You can't do that with invaders. Uh, if you want to get rid of invaders, you either have to kill them, um, or you have to go to the boss room, which will send them home. You'll notice I can't even quit the game with an invader. Uh, well, if someone's trying to invade me, obviously it's not working yet. Um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and quit, because I don't want somebody to come in here and think that they're going to get an invasion on me. That Now... Why is online play important? I'll kind of wrap up with this. Don't ignore online play because the co-op portion is pretty great. It gives you the opportunity to learn the level and the boss pattern. So um, if I put my sign down on the ground, other people can summon me, and then there's really very little penalty to dying when you're helping someone else out. Um, if you die in someone else's world, you simply go right back to your world where you put the summon sign down or where you were summoned from so you don't lose any souls you don't lose anything um, it's just a win for you and if you beat the boss you'll even get humanity as a reward for that um, similarly if you invade somebody if you kill them you get humanity um, and you'll get some souls so uh, again I tell new players if you're trying to learn the level and you think like oh I don't want to die and lose all my souls just cooperate with other people you can help them while learning the level and learning the boss techniques and then when you feel like you're ready to do it on your own do it your own game or or you can summon some friendly phantoms to help you as well but um i think that probably well covers the basics of the game i don't want to ruin anything else 
Uh, I would just encourage you, get in there, have fun. Don't let all the people that say Dark Souls is so hard scare you off. Uh, enjoy the game, and maybe I'll even have uh, the opportunity to uh, see you playing at some point in time. So I hope this helped. Take care.